May 20th this year. There's three races that I highly recommend people go to. I know obviously you can't go to uh, all three or even two of them, but all three race directors really put forth an effort. They really care about the participants. They care about the trails. They help in the community and they put on a really good race. Um, they make sure everybody has a good time. They want everybody to have a good time. <clears throat> so they do their best and they appreciate everybody coming out. <clears throat> so I don't know how to really like, you know, pick which one's first. So I'm just gonna go with the race that's the longest and then go to shortest. First one would be the Laura Hill 50K and 20K race at uh, Laura Hill State Park. I will say it's one of the cleanest state parks that we have that I've ever visited. Um, it's a really nice course. Rob Nadeo really does a good job. Um, he got custom awards that come in. Um, the food afterwards, really good. It's marked really well. The only thing last year, uh, this is a second year race. The weather was just so bad, it rained like for a whole week. So the trail was a little bit flooded, but it also added a little bit more fun to it because you really don't see that too often at races where the trail is just a little bit, I, it wasn't muddy, but it was like flooded. So when you're going uphill, there was rain coming down. With it being May 20th this year, there shouldn't be any problems with that. And even the people who ran it last year, if you talk to anybody else, they really give it uh, rave reviews and they're looking forward to coming back and they're spreading the word about it, helping grow it. Um, the 50Ks changed a little bit this year. Uh, you're basically doing the 20K course and you're gonna hit some of the uh, Lower Highlands hiking trail as well. Um, last year was in like Roar and Run natural area, but uh, DCNR doesn't allow it anymore. So he's switching it to some of the Lower Highlands hiking trail. Um, so I'm not too sure with the changes that he's making, what the course is exactly going to be. I didn't get with him yet on that, but the 20K course is pretty good. Um, whether you're a beginner or intermediate, you're really going to have a good time on it. Starts out um, at the main facility, like we'll just call it the main like boat ramp type area. Uh, you actually go down the, um, the Lake Shore Trail a little bit, and then this is like really the only part that you really hit on asphalt. Um, hit asphalt for a couple tents as you go outside the park. Hit the hit the main road coming in, and then you loop on the back side of the lake. And then from the rest of there, it's more off. It's all well, it's all off road and trails. Um, that's where the fun begins. Maybe I'm trying to think how long it is. We'll say like a half mile to the fun begins. A lot of little ups and downs uh, like waves and stuff like that nothing real steep um, no real huge like five six hundred foot climbs or anything like that you do get to see a lot of the um, cool things in the state park obviously you're going around the whole lake um, the back side of the lake's got some nice views coming off of it uh, the trail is real nice over there could be a little rooty in spots but nothing too dangerous. Um, you go across a couple bridges. You go across the one breast of the dam that if you ever seen any pictures of Lower Hill State Park, people always take pictures of. Um, you go like right by it. You hit the best trails in the state park, which is really nice. I like running out there a couple times a year and those trails, they're just real fun. Um, I would say it's 50-50 single track slash double track because there's a little bit of gravel access road as you're transitioning from trail to trail um, eight stations are stocked pretty good um, i'm trying to think what else to say real quick there's a water tower i'm trying to think of all the other things real quick i know there's a couple cool bridges that you cross saying that you basically see like the whole state park on the like the 20k course um, at least the best parts of it in my opinion even go past the uh 
stuff like the gift shop area if you want to stop in afterwards but to me just being at Laurel Hill State Park is just a gift because just how clean and how nice the um, park rangers and everybody who works there the maintenance they really take pride in the park take care of it they're really helpful and friendly so it's another way to like boost some of the Barry and recognition uh, get some more recognition for the state park I didn't have any complaints last year about the race except again except for the weather which is out of control um, but that was in early or was it yeah it was, I think it was late April last year so the weather's gonna be a lot better um, but again the course is marked really well what's nice is he actually has the markers on the ground there's still some like hanging on trees or whatnot but for the vast majority, it's on the uh, ground, so you're not taking your eyes off looking up as much as you would at some other races that have the tri uh, markings on the trees. So it alleviates some tripping hazards a little bit because you're more focused on the ground and your feet than uh, looking up, trying to spot the next fly because you can see them on the ground. Um, as long as you use your head, you're not going to get lost. What I mean by that is... If there's an intersection, just make sure you look for a flag, which way to go. You won't have an issue. But again, I think it's, the 20K is, like I said, beginner friendly for getting into trails slash intermediate. Um, so if you never ran really a trail race or ran this distance before, you shouldn't have no problems. Again, it's not really technical. It's very runnable. And there's nothing that's gonna like kill your legs per se just maybe a little short section here like a 20 30 yard section that might be a little bit harder than the rest but that's about it but then the 50k like I said is I can't really speak on it because of the changes this year but again you're gonna use the whole 20k course and then you're gonna jump on some of the lower highlands hiking trail finish up because I can't really remember where in the state park it jumps onto the trail, so I can't really speak to that. But either way, you're still going to see some really nice scenery in that area. I'm trying to think what. Okay, it's in between like Route 31 and 30. Should be um, Little Highlands Hiking Trail. So depending on how far he goes on it, I uh, see some cool things. Just check that out. So even for a 50K, it's going to be really good. Um, beginner friendly slash runner friendly. What's nice is also uh, if you're standing at the start slash finish line, so if your family's there, they can actually see you on the other side of the lake running on the uh, other side of the lake for about a mile or two because you got that wide open view on the other side. So it's cool to see people going and see how the race is playing out early on which is only like a mile and a half two miles in but still to see how it plays out early on who's jumping out in front little things like that uh, add on to the race so check that one out that'd be number one race uh, the longest uh, for May 20th the second longest race well is on May 20th is the Oil Creek, Oil Creek Stacked Races, which is a 13-miler and a 5-miler um, up at Titusville at the Drakewell Museum. First of all, if you've never been to the Drakewell Museum, you need to go. It's a really cool place. Um, gives you a lot of history on like the oil in the area and even uh, in America. A lot of cool machinery that they have going throughout the time another clean facilities I think to see the museum was like five bucks so I recommend it especially if you're taking family and you're gonna be doing the races tell them to go look at the museum or go as a family afterwards because it's really cool to see the old machinery and the history of oil and stuff like that and the disaster that happened up there um, <coughs> but getting back to the race the five you can do actually both races the five and the 13 what the window is I think it's like an hour and a half in between it, it should be so we'll say like 7 and 8 30 I think is the start times um, so the five milers first 
you do a quick loop. Like, wait. No, I think last year we started up on the one metal bridge and then we did the five mile loop. It has a little bit of hill spots, nothing drastically overly technical except for maybe that first in that first mile but the other four are pretty good and runnable um, there's a couple cool like metal bridges that you go across a couple sharp turns um, I'm trying to remember real quick which one's which but I, I know it was a really fun fast course very runnable there wasn't really too many trip hazards. Again, the course was marked pretty well, so you don't have to worry about that. As long as you're paying attention. Because like even where it splits and you're, uh, from the five and the 13, you know, it's pretty well marked. And I, there was a couple people there at some intersections last year pointing you in the right direction. But there really isn't no confusion because once you hit that spot, one race is over and then the other one's coming through so it's not like hey which one you doing type deal you pretty much know so there's no confusion there with like a volunteer or anything like that same with the 13 the 13 we started a little bit farther back near like the start finish line we did a quick little loop around like the museum area got to see all that real quick then we headed out on some of the same trails to start the race and then it obviously expanded from there to get the 13. 13's just like the 5, got that first mile that's a little bit hillier then it becomes a lot more runnable. Um, there was a couple sections that had a little bit of an incline slash decline but it wasn't nothing too exuberant where you're just going to like die afterwards. Again, it's very runnable. Uh, both courses are marked very well. Again, they're sort of fast courses, so you don't have to worry about uh, spending all day there, burning out. You, you should have plenty of energy afterwards if you ever ran those distances. Again, another uh, beginner-friendly race for both distances. I always encourage people to sign up for both if you're there and you're able to uh, handle the mileage, do both. Um, I feel they're both uniquely ran style races, meaning if you run the five and then you go and do the 13, you're not gonna feel like you're just repeating everything. It just has a completely different feel to it. The aid stations were pretty good. and uh, People were friendly, pointing in the right direction, cheering you on. Uh, even afterwards, the food was awesome afterwards. Uh, the awards were cool. Jacob, who uh, runs the race, very friendly guy. Again, he's another one that wants to help people. He wants people to come and have a good time, get their value for their money, and just enjoy the day while exploring the area. And I believe this one helps the museum or something like that. I can't remember where the money goes, but I know it was for a good cause. <clears throat> And it, the area itself is just beautiful. The trails are beautiful. Um, I know like coming off the 13, there's a cool green bridge as you're coming down uh, into the finish line area, which is real fun. Um, I got some pictures on it last year. And just some of the cool things that you do see along the trail, just like just general natural, nature scenery is really worth it. Um, it was very fun drawing blanks right now while I'm driving but I know I really enjoyed the race last year I did both I think you get like a hat if you do both you get socks if you do one uh, I'm trying to think what else that you get um, I know there was like cowbells and something else either way it was a really fun race I hope people come and support that one as well if, if you're closer to that one um or if you want, just want to see the museum and explore a different area, it's a really good time and trip, and you you really do get the value for your money, and you can make it a little family afternoon. Again, if you're going to the museum, or if you're just you know just 
doing a race or whatnot. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I guess that's about it. I mean, I would go back in a heartbeat just because of how fun it was and just something different since I never really raced up there before. Again, the area is just nice and the way they made you feel welcome up there makes you want to go back year after year. Plus, if you're like me and you want to do a couple races, bang a couple races out in the weekend, that's a way to do it since you can do both. And there's enough time in between that you can actually do both and recover a little bit, change clothes, rehydrate, that sort of thing. So it's pretty good. So check it out if you can. Now the third race is the Lorraine uh, Hiking Trails 5K. Uh, Mike Hammers puts that one on. Um, obviously it's gonna benefit the trails. It's a, it's a really good um, 5K course. A little bit difficult, but if you're gonna get into trail running a little bit, this would be a good test on a short distance course. The trails are obviously marked well. Um, there's a there's a bunch of different intersecting trails uh, on the hiking trail part, but the way they have it marked, you shouldn't get lost as long as you're paying attention. If you're not paying if you're paying attention to the markings on the trees instead of the ribbons that you're supposed to follow, that's where you're gonna have issues. But he actually has ribbons instead of the paint that's on the trees. I know you start out near the parking lot, you run up an asphalt section real quick for like a tenth or two, which is nice because it spreads out the field and then it becomes more single track 99% of the time. Uh, you're gonna be going uphill, we'll just call it the first half of the race. I mean, you're not going straight up the whole time, you're uh, doing some dips, up and downs, but the first half of the race is more incline heavy and then the second half of the race obviously is uh, decline heavy uh, so prepare your legs for that like even the second half of the race gets a little bit rooty um, in some parts so the first half of your race uh, I guess turn and burn a little bit get some spacing in between people so you can take your time a little bit more on the second half when it becomes rooty but the work that they're doing up at uh, the Lorraine Hiking Trails right now is awesome. They're really trying to get the community involvement going, uh, trying to highlight the trails and all the things that they're doing up there, the different little festivals, um, like wine and uh, they have like a wine thing. They got the uh, Clark's coming in June. They have like a Halloween bash. They're really making the park itself really nice there's gonna be like an amphitheater up there at some point it's more like playground facilities i think basketball hoops or something like that maybe but he's really putting in the work and that whole organization is really putting in the work to make it a really nice place um, there's a couple cool waterfall features up there you, you don't get to see them during the race but afterwards if you want to walk like an extra mile or so and see them you won't regret it there is a lot of things to see on those trails so that's why I want people to come and support that race as well and also the, what I like to tell people about it is he has a bunch of geocaches up there I think there's over 20 now I can't remember the exact number that there is but it takes you around to like the different trails and different cool things in the uh, park to see I'm just trying to highlight some of the things to get you to come to the race as well uh, but Michael is a race director really cares about the community about the park and what they're trying to do up there so coming and supporting the 5k and some of the other events he does will really help them out with the future plans and maintaining and uh, cleaning up stuff in the area I mean for being in the middle what I say Johnstown I know it's Lorraine Barrow but we're, you know, everybody still calls it Johnstown. It's a, it's a really hidden gem that not too many people know about, but as the word gets out, I think it's gonna be 
taking off a little bit. I don't know. There's always people there. Not like 50, 60 people, but there's always like two or three people on the trails all the time. You know, exploring, just walking around, getting some exercise, having fun, taking pictures. But the 5K itself, you know, is a good way to help support their efforts. Again, I like it. It's a good uh, training and stomping grounds if you want to get some practice on some different training like single track, double track, um, little root sections, you know, climbing, declining. There's actually like a whole, well, the one thing I forgot to mention is there's a view. I forget, it's like, I think it's like over Ferndale. I always forget which borough it's over, but you can look out and you can see like a vast majority like downtown like we'll say like Ferndale-ish area which is really cool to see during the race but it's got a good mix I think it's a good again when I say beginner because um, it's a step up from like a road or uh, rail trail 5k and just a, um, a true beginner 5k so it's just right above that in difficulty but again, it's a 5K. So by the time you start it, it you know, you're going to be done and um, not have any issues, you know, like diet or anything like that. But again, it's a nice race. I enjoyed it. He actually has one, you know, on May 20th, and I can't remember. There's one in the fall as well. It takes a different route up there. So he does mix it up. So keep a lookout for the different ones that he does and the different activities that they do up there. So as a wrap up, those three races on May 20th are all races that I would recommend I would go to in a heartbeat. Um, it just sucks this year that they fall all on the same time. Last year they were all separate. Uh, so it basically comes down to how far you want to travel, what distance you want to race, because all three race directors hands down care about their races care about their participants and they want everybody to have a good time and they give them great value for um, what they offer so you got the Laurel Hill 50k 20k this um, Oil Creek stack 13 and 5 milers you got the Lorraine 5k so there's plenty of options May 20th I'm hoping people come out and support those races I don't know if there's any others in the area, but those are my top three that I definitely want to support. Now, granted, they're all trail races, maybe just do road, but, you know, if you're just a road runner, these races, I still recommend that you get your feet wet or trying something different, because you're definitely going to have a good time at all three of them, no matter which one you choose. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about them. It's just, it's just one of those coin flips. It's like, which one do you want to do and how far you want to travel? Um, I hope you choose one. If you have any questions, let me know. I can give you uh, GPS files, give you some like elevation charts, see what it's all about, total gain, uh, loss, and things like that, like what trails. Obviously, I can't do that um, on my phone. While I'm videoing, but otherwise, if you need the files, just to see what you know, how much gain you're actually going to run for each one, I most certainly can do that. Um, give you a little tips on them. I haven't gotten back out the uh, the Oil Creek stacked races yet to video them, but I do have Lorraine's race videoed, and I do have the 20k Floral Hill videoed. If you want to check them out. But I don't have the 50K or Oil Creek yet uh, videoed. I'm going to try my best, but with my schedule, I'm probably not going to be able to. Um, but it'll give you, if you watch the videos, it'll give you an idea of what to expect as well. Um, yes, please check them out. Please support those races and those race directors. Um, hopefully, I'll see you at one of them. Hopefully, you do go to one of them, you take some pictures and some videos, let me know how you like them. 
obviously I know you're going to have a good time if you go. So just let me know if you feel the same way and hope to see you there.